Welcome back to Engineering Simplified. In this video today, which is part of the Robotics 101 video series, I'm going to talk about the forces and torques of a robot. More specifically, when the robot is in a static equilibrium. What it means is when the robot is standing stationary, that is when the robot is said to be in a static equilibrium. Let's say if I have a robot here and it is holding an object, let's say it is holding a box or a book, and it is just standing there. So that is when the robot is said to be in static equilibrium. Now, before we move on to actually doing the mathematics of how to find the forces and torques, I want you to understand why do we need to find them in the first place. So I have just converted this robot into a planar version of it. So it becomes a three R robot, which has got three revolute joints. So three motors attached here, here and here. Now let's say this robot is holding something heavy. So let's say it is holding something heavy. So this object that it is holding would have a weight which would kind of make the robot's end effector push a little down and it would also have a moment which I have marked here. So the weight is acting downwards and then there is a moment which in this case is acting in the clockwise direction. So if the robot has to remain stationary in a static equilibrium, I know that the robot has to exert an equal and opposite force and moment, right? And where does this moment come from? It comes from the motors. So the reason that we are doing this force and torque analysis is to figure out how powerful the motors of the robot should be. So before we go on to implement the motors on the robot, we need to figure out the application and then figure out how powerful the motors that we need in order to satisfy our requirement, right? So we do all of this in order to figure out how powerful our motors should be. Now coming to how do we actually do it. So here I have redrawn this robot on the left right here. And instead of showing the object, what I have done is I have removed the object from the picture, but I have drawn the forces associated with it. Now notice that I have not drawn the forces that the object exerted on the robot. In fact, I have drawn the forces exerted by the robot, by the end effector of the robot on the object. So FG, which is this one, is the force exerted by the gripper on the object. And MG is the moment exerted by the gripper on the object, which is just going to be equal to the force that the object exerts on the gripper. So now I have redrawn the robot, but this time I have shown the angles associated with each of the revolute joints. So here theta one represents the angle with respect to the horizontal, which is being changed by the first motor and theta two represents the angle which is changed by the second motor. And now the way to go about it is we draw the free body diagrams. So here I've drawn the free body diagram of the end effector. So in this case, I have drawn the yellow, which is minus XG and minus YG being the forces that are exerted on the end effector. And then I have drawn minus mg as the moment which is exerted again on the end effector and T3 which is the torque 3 is the moment which is generated by the third motor which is the motor right here. So the, more, the torque that is exerted by this motor I have represented as by it by T3. So if I just do submission of moment and I know it is in a static equilibrium, the submission of moment is going to be zero. So my T3 comes out to be equal to mg. So this is how powerful my third motor needs to be. Now similarly, here I have drawn the second link, which is A2. I have again marked the forces and the torques being exerted on the link and T2 represents the the moment exerted by the motor, the second motor, which is right here. 
So now I again do the same thing. I do the summation of moments equal to zero. And so this is my T2, which is the moment exerted by the motor. This is my Mg, which is moment exerted on the second link. And this part right here is the moment which is exerted as a result of the forces acting on the link, right? So this is just my force vector and this is the distance. So what I have done is I have used the formula R cross F in order to find the moment. And I just set it equal to zero. And, uh, and what I've done is in order to write it more compactly, I have written C12, which just means cosine of theta one plus theta two. And similarly, S12 is sine of theta one plus theta two. And this is the second equation that I get. So what this equation tells me is how powerful my second motor needs to be. And now moving forward, so I have drawn the free body diagram. In this case, I have combined the ring one and ring two, marked out the moment and the forces acting on these rings. And I have written T1 as the torque exerted by the first motor. So I've written summation of moment equal to zero. So this is how it goes. And finally, I get this equation, T1 equals to this. So these three equations tell me how powerful my three motors need to be in order to be in static equilibrium. That is in order to make sure that the robot is able to grab a specified object of a certain mass, which exerts a certain moment. So all I now need to do is I just need to plug in the values of the object that the robot is intended to hold. I just plug in the values. That is, I plug in the forces that it is going to be generating and the moment is, it is going to be generating. And then I can figure out T1, T2, and T3. T1, T2, and T3. And these three torques are the torques that need to be generated by the motors. So when I go to the market in order to buy motors for my robot, I, I have to make sure that whatever motors are purchased are able to produce at least this much amount of torque in order to satisfy this particular case. So in order to be used for this particular application. That was all for this video. In the next video, we are going to continue from here and I am going to do one example using this and also go a little bit more into detail of what these terms mean and how we can write this even more compactly and we can even make use of Jacobian somehow. So, See you in the next video and thank you for watching.